Hi everyone, I'm going to walk you through today how to find articles in the library databases, how to use the databases, all that good stuff. Um, so when we, the first thing you need to do is log into Ocean Connect into this screen. Mine may look a little different than yours, but you'll wanna to go to My Courses and that will take you to Canvas, which you probably already know, but if you don't, that's what you're going to do to get there. Once you're in Canvas, you should see this course on your dashboard, Library 101, uh, or 01, excuse me, library resources and information. If it's not there, you may have to go to all courses here down at the bottom when you click on courses. And then it would appear somewhere here. So here it is. Uh, if it's not already starred, I would star that so it's easily accessible from your dashboard. If it's not in all courses, or on your dashboard, then you need to contact the library. So before you go further, stop the video and I, contact me or contact the library so we can make sure that you get enrolled in that course. Once you're enrolled, you should be automatically enrolled, but sometimes there are some glitches. L-R-I-L-1-0, or excuse me, I always say 101. L-R-I-L-01. And you'll go, come to a page that looks like this. Now it's gonna depend on your topic, uh, which databases you go to. But we're always going to start with, I want to start my research. It's a good place to start. The library has done a really great job organizing all the databases to make it easy for you to find the articles that you want. So that's where you would want to start. But just to show you some other things that are here on this homepage, there's the catalog. That's mostly for books that are physically in the library, which if you're listening to this and we're still remote, you're not going to use that really unless um, they have pickup services available. I don't know how that's all going to work as of my recording this video. Mostly we're going to be using eBooks, which you can use. Uh, I mostly use databases, but you can use eBooks if you would like. And we're also gonna use databases, but we're not gonna go right to the databases tab. We will start here. Don't worry about expert researcher yet. We're just getting started. This is for once you've been at OCC for a little while, you know, the basics of the databases, how to use those journal articles, all that good stuff. Down here are their other services. So their hours are here. Obviously right now, again, if you're listening to this remotely, we're not on campus, but there are still librarians available remotely to help you. And I'll show you where the chat is momentarily. Printing, copying, obviously we're not doing that either. There's what's new tab. You can always look there. If there's anything new with the library you wanna check out, their contact information, if you need to borrow a book, that information's there. Magazines, the computer lab, again, most of this stuff, at least for the purposes of my recording this, is irrelevant. <laughs> but I just wanna show you that it's there when we do eventually get back to campus. The journal directories here, interlibrary loan. This is important, uh, and I'll come back to this at the end. If we don't have an article that you want to use, you can do interlibrary loan. New York Times Pass, I'm also going to come back to at the end. I highly recommend you sign up for that. You get the New York Times for free while you're a student at OCC using your OCC email. And then Films on Demand, so that we have all different films here for you to watch as well. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because that really doesn't have to do with what we're talking about, but it is there. So we'll come back to Interlibrary Loan New York Times Pass at the end. First, we're just going to click Get Started, and it'll bring you to the research guides, which again, it's really organized to help you be successful and make your research process a lot easier. So I always recommend starting with current events. Most of you are working with current debatable topics. So that's a good place to begin. If you're not sure what your topic fits in, this is also a good place to start. So here we have all kinds of stuff. Uh, if this says available here, this is the library chat. If it says available, that means the librarian is there ready to talk with you uh, and they'll get back to you pretty quickly. You can also call them. The extensions are here. You would dial the OCC main number and then dial those extensions if you need to talk to somebody. So this is really good. If you have questions about articles or finding articles, I can help you do the process of finding them, but I don't know everything that the library has. That's the librarian's domain. They know everything. They're really good with search terms. Um, like I said, I can help you, but they're going to be much more efficient and they know everything that's there. Whereas I don't, I know how to find things, but I don't know everything that's there. So 
you can go to getting started first once you have your topic. Uh, if you're listening to this, you should have your um, topic for your project for the semester. So this talks about choosing a topic. So there's all kinds of stuff here. If you're not sure about your topic yet when you're watching this, you can look at the issues, SIRS issues researcher. These are just kind of to help you get started. These are not academic journal articles. Um, opposing viewpoints does have some articles, but if you're doing browse issues, that's not articles you wanna be citing in any of your papers. And again, these also, these are just references. This is just to help you literally get started. So these are not sources that you would want to look at um, unless you want to go here, peer reviewed. Academic Search Premier is my favorite database. It has all the things. It's an EBSCO database. So if you used EBSCO in high school and you're used to that, this is a great place to start. Um, and I'm going to go back to Academic Search Premier because you can access it from lots of different places. They also have diff uh, citation information here. So if you don't like Purdue OWL, you can use the library's resources to help you get started with your citations, which I think is really awesome. So I talk about a lot of that stuff, but they have it specific here as well. So we're just going to go back to that page of current events. And this is where really where you want to go next is databases. So we're going to click that and it's going to bring you to current events databases. So we have subject databases and we have general databases. So your subject databases, these are really specific to whatever subject it is you're working on. In this case, it is current events. So these are current events databases. They don't necessarily have peer reviewed journal articles. So remember the difference between an academic journal article or a peer reviewed journal article and just an article uh, that's either a news article or a magazine article that might be in one of these databases. These are really just references. These are good when you're getting started. We're going to use these in your exploratory papers uh, because they're really easier to read and get you in the habit of citing sources rather than jumping right into those academic journal articles. So you can use CQ Researcher. You can use uh, global issues in context. You can use opposing viewpoints. I'm okay with any of these. Um, those three I'm familiar with. These two I'm not really that familiar with, but there's all kinds of stuff there too. So these are reliable sources. They're just not um, peer reviewed journal articles necessarily. So that's what you wanna really be learning the difference between are those types of articles and those types of sources. So we're gonna start here. Uh, I like global issues in context. It might ask you or prompt you to sign in just like it's prompting me because we're not on campus. We're not on the OCC Wi-Fi. So just enter your regular Ocean Connect credentials and then it'll bring you here. So this has all kinds of stuff that's going on now in the world. It has things that are recent, things that are being debated out in the world. So you can look through here, browse issues, and then it breaks it down by countries, um, environment. These are kind of overall topics, right? These are really broad things, health and medicine, society, science, technology. So uh, I'm just gonna pick a topic that I wanna work with. Um, and I'm gonna stick with remote learning because I did that in the thesis statement video. And it's a timely topic, it's something that I'm interested in. So I'm just gonna search for remote learning and see what comes up. So you might have to enter in different search terms as well when you're using these databases. Uh, might be called distance learning, e-learning, there might be different terms you have to use. So I like global issues in context because it will give you academic journal articles as an option. We're not going to look at those yet, but they do have them here. So students perceptions in distance education and multinational study. That might be interesting. So these are all peer reviewed LMS, which is learning management system. So something like canvas uh, talks about that. Viewpoints is a good place to start. So obviously with remote learning, there's lots of different viewpoints and lots of different opinions that people have about it, especially in this very specific situation of remote learning where it was kind of forced and not a choice, not kind of forced, it was forced. We did not have a choice, we had to close. Um, OCC closed before the state mandated it back in March of 2020, uh, but the state did mandate closures. So there wasn't a choice. Instructors were frustrated, students were frustrated, but we made the best of it, at least most of us did as best as we could. Um, so this is something that I'm really interested in because I think that the landscape for education is really going to change as a result of COVID. And even though it was 
not the ideal way to go remote learning. I think that kind of, it forced us into this new realm of what education should look like and how we can make education more accessible for people. Um, so there's two sides to that, right? So there's some people that say like, no, I have to learn in person. Students learn better in person. Remote learning is not as effective. Um, and then there's the people that are kind of in the middle like me, where I think there's pluses and minuses of it. Um, I don't think that it's always ideal if you don't have all the technology that you need to make it effective or if all the students don't have the technology they need. But I think there's also some really good things. And then there's people who are all for it, who are have been teaching online for years. Online learning is not a new concept. It's been around since the late 1990s when the internet was, became accessible to people. My mom got almost all of her degrees online back in the late 90s and early 2000s um, when she went back to school. So there's all, these, all this information out here. This is not something that's brand new because of COVID. For things like elementary, middle, and high school, it's definitely newer. But for higher education, this has been around for a long time. So I'm going to look here just to show you an example of successful remote learning. I got off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I want you to understand these are the kind of things that you should be thinking about when you're trying to choose a topic. You know, what are the different viewpoints that are out there? So I just gave three, you know, there's kind of the remote learning is bad, people who are in the middle, and then there's people who, you know, say remote learning is all good. So this is successful remote learning from the New York Times, which is reputable. It's not peer reviewed, though. So keep that in mind. Not peer reviewed. It's a brief article. It's a letter to the editor. So it's coming from a source that does vet their information, right? So we want to remember that New York Times is kind of in the middle and newspapers in general are kind of in the middle of like blogs where anybody can post anything. And then we have more regulated media like uh, newspapers and magazines. And then we have peer reviewed journal articles. So there's all different kinds of levels here. We want to stay away from things that are easily found on the internet for free that are not vetted through some kind of um, process. Right. So New York Times, like this is a letter to the editor, but ultimately the editor decides what goes in there. And the editor of the New York Times is going to have a lot of experience putting media out into the world. So they're not just going to post anything. So we have this um, also sometimes called an op ed opinion editorial. So a teacher rebuts an op ed that urged schools to reopen in the fall. So this is a letter from a teacher. Right. So they're they're in the, the thick of all of this. Um, and they're responding to something that was already written that America, it says America has its priorities all wrong. Um, so the op-ed based, the op-ed that was originally published, and this is something you might have to do. You may have to go back and read that original piece. If you're looking at something like this, this is very short, but it's just giving me a perspective. So I'm not going to read through it. Um, but with the reopening, right, some teachers are very nervous about that. They might have elderly parents that live with them or compromised immune systems or young children, all these things, right? So this is just one person's opinion. And that's what we have to remember when we're looking at this. But these, again, are good places to get started. So once you've looked through, if you decide you're going to use it or not, it, it's up to you. But we're going to go back to results. That was pretty short. It just gave me a perspective. It didn't give me too much I might be able to use in a paper. But there's 142 viewpoints here on remote learning. So here, this one also positive. Um, silver linings in the pivot to remote learning. Remote learning teaches us the value of educators. So there's all different ways and directions that I could take this topic. Um, and I just wanted you to see that all of this is out here. I don't want to spend too much time here. But they're all, there's all different things you, that you can look at here. All right, so I'm going to go back to my current events databases. So that was global issues in context. Opposing viewpoints works pretty similarly, except it'll give you two opposing sides um, on an issue. CQ Researcher is the other one I like. It's a little bit different. Um, so I think for your exploratory papers, when you're trying to choose what articles to use, I would say maybe one from CQ Researcher and one from either Global Issues or Opposing Viewpoints. So, I'm gonna go up here, use my keywords, remote learning. So there's all different things here. So there's 109 results. So let's see if they have education, they do. We wanna narrow that down. So we have 14 now. 
So there may not be a, a page on exactly that, right? They just come up with learning. So let's try another keyword. Let's try distance learning. School safety. So I'm not really finding anything here yet. Let's try online. School. You have to sometimes play around with this. You may not find what you need. And also when you're working with something that's so recent like COVID, you may not find everything that you're looking for. Um, and that's why I really encourage you to not pick things that are just happening. Um, you can write about COVID, but you may have to write about it in a broader context because there's not going to be a whole lot of peer-reviewed articles out there yet. At least, again, at the time of my writing this, it's July uh, 13th, 2020. So there might be some things, but a lot of times, especially for something like this, a lot of the articles that are getting written are very technical about things like vaccines and whatnot. So you want to be very careful about the types of sources that you're picking that go along with your topic. All right, so I'm not finding anything here. You may find something here, you may not. But you can also go to browse topics. So maybe I'm just not using the right keywords. Cost of education, let's see. Online education, oh yeah, see, online education. So I just went there. Digital education, this is from 2011, so it's a little bit outdated. But it is going to give me some information about digital education. Can technology replace classroom teachers? So a little bit different, but it is talking about remote learning. So I might be able to use that. But just to show you an example of what the articles look like in CQ Researcher, you have all these different things here. So this is the full report. And then there's all these sections. You can just go to a section. So if I go to current situation, Digital expansion, they're talking about. Everything's kind of cited here. Again, not peer-reviewed, but it is vetted um, by editors. You can look at the pro-con. That'll give you two different perspectives. Uh, so again, for your exploratory paper, that's basically what you're writing is kind of a, a pro-con paper, looking at two different sides of a problem. Um, and then they give you the two sides here. So I just wanted to show you that. There's all different things if you're looking for any kind of graphs. Um, that would be here. And again, this is from 2011. So this is this kind of information um, is probably not valid anymore because online education has evolved so much since 2011. Like I was still in college then and I took an online course, I think in 2010. Uh, maybe it was 2011. I don't remember. Um, but that those opinions are probably very different now. So we want to be very careful about what we're using uh, when it was published, right? Okay, so that's CQ Researcher. I just wanted to show you what that looks like and how to use that. So we're going to get rid of those two. All right. Creme de la creme, as I call it, is the peer-reviewed journal articles. That's the most, it's not going to be unbiased, but it's going to be the most reliable information you can get. And that's because of that peer review process that I talked about in the academic journal articles video. If you haven't watched that yet, you can watch that. Um, if you're watching this in the beginning of the semester, and we're working on that exploratory paper, you don't need to worry about academic search premiere. You can stop the video and come back to it when you need to. Um, unless you're interested, then you can keep watching. But this is where we're gonna go next. So things get a little bit more complicated here because we're working with different sources than we were in Global Issues or CQ Researcher. Uh, these articles are very, very specific. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. And you're going to have all different subjects coming in. So like I'm going to put remote learning and I'm going to get things from psychology. I'm going to get things from, you know, mental health. I'm going to get things from education, all these different things. Um, all these different people are going to have all these things to say. And I'm probably going to have to narrow my search, but we're going to start with online learning. So what's cool about this is it's a very intuitive. So if I'm looking for all different types of search terms here, I can do Click this, and this is going to give me any article that has the terms remote learning, online learning, virtual learning, e-learning, remote education. So that's broadening my search. So we're going to start there because they all basically mean the same thing. 
So I got 71,000 results. That's a lot. <laughs> um, and there's a couple things we can do to narrow that down because obviously none of us are sifting through 71,000 titles. That's where we go over here. We want to start limiting our searches. The first thing you want to do is full text. You can always go back and uncheck this if you don't find anything, but full text means that the library has the entire article uh, in its databases because everything that's listed here, we may just have a citation for it. We may not have the article. And when that happens, that's when we're going to do interlibrary loan, which I'll get to at the end. But we're, for now, we're just going to click full text. That's going to narrow it down a little bit for us. So that narrowed it by quite a bit. Right now we're down to 46,000. Then we also want to do scholarly peer reviewed because that's what we're looking for. Otherwise you're going to get things like book reviews and annotations and all this stuff. So we're going to narrow that down again to scholarly peer review. All right, that narrowed it down by almost half, right? So we just keep narrowing, narrowing, narrowing. Last thing we want to do, depending on your topic, you want to narrow the publication to no more than 20 years old. With this topic in particular, because it's remote learning and I'm looking to look at the benefits maybe of remote learning, let's say that's my topic. I think that's what it was in the thesis video. I want to go maybe in the last 10 years and see what I can find. Because remote learning probably didn't exist in 1916. That was called homeschooling. That's about as remote as they got. Um, but what we want to do, I'm going to go to 2000. All right, so that didn't really narrow it down too much, right? It still leaves me with 25,000 results. So I'm gonna go to 2010. So that's the last 20 years. If I go to 2010, that cuts it down by a little bit more. So I can start scrolling through there. I can also advance search here. I can add to it. We have that. I'm gonna add another search term and then I'm gonna change this because that's still a lot for me to sift through. I'm gonna do benefits, advantages, or positive effects. And then I'm gonna, again, go to full text, scholarly peer reviewed. It doesn't, um, doesn't have the dates. We can go back and fix that though. And I'm gonna hit search. All right, so that narrowed it down a lot to 2,887. Cause I don't wanna find articles that are talking about things that I don't wanna read about. So this is 1978 and we're gonna go back and again, narrow that down to the last 10 years because that's what I'm interested in looking at. So now I have 1,600. That's still a lot of articles, but it's a heck of a lot better than the 71,000 that we started with. And it still leaves us with a lot to work with. So now we're gonna scroll through a little bit. Uh, once you find a title that kind of strikes you, that's when you would click on it. So does online learning work better than offline learning in undergraduate medical education, a systematic review and meta-analysis? So I'm not looking specifically at medical education, but you can see how specific these articles are just from that title. So I'm going to skip that one. Investigating critical success factors in online learning environments and higher education systems in the Caribbean. Again, if it was about the United States, I'd be interested. I'm not looking at the Caribbean. I want to look specifically at the United States, but I am looking at online learning and higher education systems. So we're getting warmer, but we're going to skip that one because it's very specific to that location. So when we're choosing our topics, we want to keep all these things in mind. That's why I make you do all these exercises to narrow down your who, what, when, where in your topics, because there's so much out there that you could look at. But for me, as, a, as an educator in New Jersey, what's going on in the Caribbean is not affecting me directly. And it's not something I'm interested in, at least not right now. So we're going to keep scrolling. Integrating games as a means to develop e-learning insights from a psychological perspective. That sounds interesting, right? How do we incorporate something like games into remote learning, especially in higher education where that might be seen as juvenile? Let me see what I can learn from this. Cause I'm looking at colleges. I'm not looking at, you know, pre-K through college. I'm looking at a very specific area. All right. So this is going to give you all of the article information. Once you click on that title gives you the authors, where it's published, British Journal of Educational Technology, published 2019, very recently. You can talk about video games, which is something I don't know a lot about that I might want to learn more about. And then you would read the abstract. The abstract is just a summary of the article that's telling you what the article is about. So you don't have to read, a whole, read the whole thing and then decide 
well, that's not going to work for me. So you can read through that. I'm not going to read it all, all of it. But, you know, I'm not really interested in video games. And that's from the British Journal. So I don't really know what's going on over in England too much. Again, I want to stay focused on my area. So it's interesting, but I'm going to go back to my result list. Okay. Activating learning at scale, a review of innovations and in online learning strategies. So that's a review, but it's going to talk about lots of different strategies. So that's something that maybe I'm interested in. Oh, but there's no full text. That might be a problem, right? So we have the full text finder. I'm going to read this quickly. Synthesis of prior findings, domain of empirically evaluated active learning. So you can see the language already is something that you may not be familiar with. Um, this is something that I've looked a little bit at, so I know what they're talking about here. This article looks interesting for me. All right. So what I would do is write down all of this information or leave the tab open. You can use the full text finder if you want. But... Uh, Let's see, library holdings. Let's see if our library has it. Nope, our library does not have it. So I have to do an interlibrary loan. So I mentioned that in the beginning. I'm going to go back to that now so you can see exactly what you need to do for that. So here's my article. I'm going to leave this tab up. So I say, yes, I really need this article. I think it's going to be really helpful for me in doing my research paper. So we're going to go back to the home page. And then I'll go to interlibrary loan and it's going to take you to a form to fill out. I'm not going to fill it out here because we don't need to use that kind of time, but I just want you to know how to do it. So we're going to go to books and articles. This is the guidelines. So you can read through that. It tells you exactly what to do, but we're going to go to request an article. You can also do it for books. If we don't have an ebook or a regular book that you want, you can do that. The great thing about the articles though, is that, um, you'll be able to keep it after it's been loaned to you. Um, you can download it to your computer. You should be able to have access to it for a while. Whereas if you rent a book, um, eventually OCC has to give it back to the library they loaned it from, hence interlibrary loan. So basically in a nutshell, how this works is we don't have something, an OCC librarian reaches out to let's say Brookdale and they have it. Brookdale then lends it to us um, and then we can borrow it. So I had to do that when I wrote my master's thesis. Um, I borrowed a book that Mammoth didn't have and um, I borrowed it for a while and I ended up needing it longer. So I had to just go buy my own because they had to return it. Um, but I was able to get that book and make sure that it was something that I could use before I went out and bought it. And I've used it many times since then um, because it's just something that I study. But you would fill out this form. I had to do it for articles also. If Mammoth didn't have the articles, um, I would have to fill out a similar form. But you would put your information here. So your name, last name, your street address, where you live. Make sure you put your OCC email. It's not going to get sent to your Canvas. It's going to get sent to your actual Outlook on OCC email. Um, so make sure that's where you're checking for the article to come back. Um, and then how do you want to be notified? Email or phone? Usually email's better. And then you would check OCC student. And then you're going to put the information here. Uh, don't ever put that you want to pay for anything um, because interlibrary loan is free. If it's not free, you don't want it. <laughs> um, okay. Then you're going to fill this in. So periodical title. So this is where the journal article is published, not the article itself. So in this case, the periodical is computers and education. I guess I'll fill this out just to show you. I'm not going to actually request it though. So I would put that there. The volume number is here, volume 125. The issue number, this is just like if you're doing a citation, there is no issue number. So you don't need to put that. I think it asks for the page number. So I'm just going to copy them here. Pages, yep, put that there. Month and year, it said October, I think 2018. Let me double check that. Always make sure all your information's correct. Yep, I was correct. And then we want the article title. Again, copying and pasting is a good way to do it because then you don't have to worry about misspelling anything. 
and then the authors, which we will just copy here. Um, maybe I can't I'll copy one at a time. I'm just going to copy. You can put, you have to put them all in. Um, the only information, if you're not sure how to fill out the periodical volume number, pages, month, year, you really just need the article title and the authors. Um, and then if there's an ISSN number, it would be stated pretty clearly. Yep, that's also down here. You would copy and paste that over into the form. And then that, fill out additional comments. Uh, if you're in a condensed course, I don't recommend interlibrary loan because it can take a little bit of time unless you're ahead of, ahead of the game. This is not something you wait to do until the day your annotated bibliography is due um, or the day that an article review is due or the day before your paper is due. This is something that you need to use ahead of time. It's a very helpful tool if you use it um, appropriately. But again, requesting an article the day before your paper's due is not going to be helpful because they may not get it back from the other school. Because what happens is you put the request in the librarian has to read your request, send that request out to another school. The other school has to see if they have it, right? They look and see if they have it, and then they get back to OCC. So it takes usually at least 48 hours um, for an article, if not a little bit longer. All right, so I'm just going to exit out of that, but then you would just hit um, submit at the end. Okay, so that's interlibrary loan. So we learned Academic Search Premier. I found an article. You need to have two academic journal articles for your research paper. I'm just gonna, that was just one. That's how you do it. It just takes some getting used to, really. Um, it's not something that you're gonna do perfectly the first couple of times, and that's okay. You just have to learn how to use search terms, how to use you know, things like or, and. Um, it's up to you uh, what, what, how you wanna do it. But that's just one way. Um, just play around with it. Don't, again, don't wait until the last minute to try to do this. Um, get yourself used to it. So I'm going to X out of that. And I'm going to go to here, current events databases. Again, we're back here. So academic search premier again is, is my favorite because it has everything. However, if you are working with a topic and you know kind of what subcategory that belongs in. Let's say you're looking at uh, something with Black Lives Matter. If you're looking at that current event, you can go to criminal justice. It would be in current events. Um, if you're looking at something happening in history, you can go to history. If you're looking at something in medicine, you can go to sci uh, biology. Uh, all these things. There's all these different things here based on majors and areas. But again, if you're not sure where to go, go right to current events. All right, I'm going to go back home. So we looked at the kind of basic databases. We looked at the Academic Search Premier. We looked at Interlibrary Loan. The last thing I want to show you is New York Times Pass, which is right here. So this you get for free uh, through OCC. So I already have an account, so I can't create another one. But you just go to Create Account. It's very easy. Uh, you have to use your OCC email though. You can't use your Gmail or Facebook or Apple or anything like that. It has to be your OCC. You can create a password. What I recommend, use the same password that you use for your Ocean Connect. Um, you don't have to get the updates and offers from the times though. And you just hit create account and then you'll have one. I'm going to go to login because I already have one. What did I make my password here? And then just to show you what this looks like as soon as it wants to log me in. But OCC is paying for this, so use it. You can use this in either your exploratory or your research paper. Obviously, again, they're not academic journal articles, but you can use them. Oh, this isn't working, of course. All right, so it'll just bring you to the New York Times homepage. But I just wanted to show you that. So I do recommend creating that account. All right, that is your library resources and information literacy overview. Feel free to poke around the website a little bit, the Canvas site rather, um, on your own time. It's up to you when you want to do that, if you want to do that. You don't have to go to any of these other tabs. Um, just go to here and follow the process that I told you. 
you can go back and watch this as many times as you want. You can write down the process, but again, start my research and go from there. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions about this, feel free to let me know. I'm happy to help you. And if not, good luck in your research.